You've been hearing for years that social media is harming your kids, but it's only recently that we're getting longitudinal studies, the results of longitudinal studies yeah. of how this is affecting kids as they grow into teens and mature into adults. You're gonna to wanna to hear this so you can know how to look out for you and yours. So I don't wanna be an alarmist because I think you can use social media for good. I like social media. So what's the big deal? What's the problem, especially when it comes to our kids? Challenges of social media. Instant gratification. It's all about me. Kids are looking for counterfeit approval and praise. Cyberbullying is a real thing. And it actually increases depression and a sense of social isolation. There have been studies done regarding kids and adults that it actually increases depression and social isolation. And here's why it's particularly devastating for children. Between the ages of 10 and 12, there are changes in the brain. And those changes make social rewards, compliments on a new hairstyle, making a classmate laugh, they start to feel more satisfying. Specifically, the receptors for the happy hormones of oxytocin and dopamine multiply in the brain, and preteens are extra sensitive to attention, which means they're also extra sensitive to rejection mm. and disapproval, yeah. right? And when they're constantly seeking that counterfeit approval from their peers, and that becomes their world, it can be devastating when they don't get it. Well, I think all of us, at least of our generation, because we were the last generation yeah. to grow up without internet when we were kids. Right. And without social media when we were in our teens. Right. Right. I, at least for me, like, social media started popping up when I was in college. Yeah. Right? And, I was married and I had a kid when right. I joined Facebook. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> there, so, so there you go. And so we see this difference because I remember we used to engage with the people around us. Right. And now everyone's just kind of staring at their phones, right? Right. And let's take a look at what this looks like, actually. Okay, you know what? Brilliant idea. This is our last night together before Katie leaves, so let's savor this. How about we put our phones down and we can make 10 seconds of unobstructed family eye contact. <laughs> Starting right. This seems. Put your phone down now. <laughs> I can feel the bonding. See, this is good right here. This is natural. <laughs> You're allowed to blink. It's just eye contact. Look at Monch right there. That's the spirit right there, huh? <laughs> hey, it seems like you're not taking this seriously. What makes you say that? Guys, guys, don't, everyone, focus. Okay, focus. now that we're all really comfortable. I can't <laughs> okay, make so, I mean, that's a bit of humor, but in real life, we relate. Or how long do any of us go without our phone in our hand? Right. And so I think it's important to have something of a, of a social media fast. I know, I know teachers at school who have a bin that the students put their phones in when they arrive mm -hmm. in the class and they can't have them back until class is done right. because they need, to, they need to deprogram what's going on with their right. brain and with their nervous system, right? Well, and I want to talk about that just a little bit because, you know, we're all about the science here. What happens to our nervous system, right? Like Mended Light, we're all about healing from trauma, right? And yeah. being the best version of ourselves. So what all screens do is dysregulate the nervous system. Yeah. So fight, flight, freeze, these are all forms of your nervous system being dysregulated. And for some people, like we're all chemically different. Like our chemical makeup is different. Our and, genetics are different. Yeah, what our, we eat is different, how, how we respond to food. How and, we were raised, where we come from, yeah. Right, it's all different. And so some people have really strong negative reactions immediately to yeah. social media, to screens. I have a child like this. We have a child like we this. Have, we have a child <laughs> like this. <laughs> Guess it can be your child too, right? Like their personality drastically changes from just a weekend of primarily playing video games or screen time or computers. It really doesn't matter. Right. Drastically changes. And it has been that way their whole life, right? And so for them, they're going to have to decide as they grow into an adult, where do electronics fit in my world? And it's not that electronics or technology is evil or bad. The question is, are we the servant or are we the master? Right. And what is it doing to our overall health and wellness? And are we using it as a crutch? Are we using it as a babysitter? Is it serving us? Is it serving our children? And how are we protecting them? 
Uh, and I and I agree with you. I mean, obviously, because I I love being on social media. I love seeing what's going on in people's lives. I love offering reinforcement and affection for my family and friends, what's going on in their lives. I know you yeah. do too. Like I see you on Facebook, I'm on Instagram a lot. And obviously I love movies and I love TV shows. The issue is, are we out of alignment? Are we yeah. not practicing in moderation? Are we failing to live in the real world? Uh, there's a great, there's a book and a movie that I really like called Ready Player One. And it's all about how we immerse ourselves in virtual worlds and movies and TV shows and video games. And the surprising takeaway from both of those stories is that that can all be a fun distraction that adds some flavor to life, but what people need is actual connection and living in the real world and dealing with real problems and real successes and real experiences. And when we conflate the two, we're gonna be depressed, we're gonna be anxious, we're gonna be miserable. And studies have shown that. Yeah. And it particularly affects children and teens and preteens as their brain is developing, right? Yes. Because their brain during those ages is setting the pattern for the rest of their life, yes. right? And so it's hardwiring their brain literally differently, yeah. right? And, and I, thinking of that Mitchells versus Machines clip that we just watched, we train our brains to crave the virtual. We train our brains to crave uh, the synthetic instead of the real. And what happens to our children when they're on social media a lot or even at all, is that's what their brain becomes attuned to. And what are the risks of that? Let's take a look. That's powerful and sobering. I mean, all of us remember what it was like to be a preteen and a teenager, right? Yeah. And for certain personality types, and we're not gonna go into that, but they look for acceptance, they look for belonging, yeah. and that that's literally like air, right? Yeah. And so they are so influenced by their appearance, by their peers, by acceptance, and they're so sensitive to rejection, right? right. And so when they earn that fake, imitation acceptance and it's fake and imitation because it comes from they're putting something fake into the world that receives praise and adulation but it's right. not real right mm -hmm. and I had this conversation years ago with my oldest um, as he was becoming a teenager and I saw some of these behavior tendencies right when he didn't like his siblings because they were overwhelming <laughs> or it was harder to interact in person like he turned to a screen and I said here's what you're doing you're getting approval, you're getting dopamine, you're getting feel-good hormones by watching entertaining th things, by clicking like, by having comments and conversations. It yeah. is so easy because it requires almost nothing from you, right? Yeah. And in reality, real relationships that have meaning take work, they take understanding, they take putting yourself out there and accepting someone else yeah. at the same time. It's that give and take, and it is not the instant gratification that we get, particularly from social media. Right. And that is why it's so hard and so challenging and so damaging. It takes these challenges that were always there from preteen and teen life, and it blows them up so huge and so big, and we don't even realize what's going on. Yeah, and we create a generation of shallow, vapid people. <laughs> Who, who don't know what actual love and acceptance is. Well, and they're chasing their worth. Yeah, well, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, here on this channel, we try to be real and raw and vulnerable, even about our failures and our weaknesses, is because we don't want to chase the high. At least, I, I can't speak for you. I personally don't want to chase the high of people praising and loving me for an image that I'm putting out there that isn't true.
yeah. right? That, that isn't real. I don't think that helps anybody. And so how does social media hurt our kids and what are the solutions? I think social media, like anything else, can be used responsibly. And a big part of this is not imposing just restrictions and just rules. It's about talking about responsible use. Right? Mm -hmm. Are you encouraging your children to get on social media to build other people up? Not just for how they look, but for what they do or for what they think. Are you encouraging your children to be on social media to share uplifting, helpful things? And is there a limit? Right. Is there a limit on how much time they can be on there? What their friend circle can look like? Because we have to be aware of cyber bullies, we have to be aware of predators, we have to be aware of a lot of things. And we have to educate our children about that. Yeah. And, and, do we, and do we expand that to not just social media, but to electronics in general? Are we encouraging our children to read books, to go outside, to, to actually to play board games instead of video games, right? If you ever meet me in real life, I have a soapbox about how technology is stealing our children's childhood. So we won't go into that right now. But uh, Well, but you also, I mean, you do have that soapbox, but here you are using yeah. technology to help people because like anything, it's a tool. Right. It's all about moderation. Well, and the question is, is it a tool? Are you the master? And are you using that tool to serve you and your life mission and your purpose? Yeah. Or is the social media the master? and it's when that gets flipped sure. that it becomes damaging. Yeah. And our children are so young and so unaware. Their brains are still developing. Right, yeah. Like, yeah. but that is such a heavy responsibility that we do not want to place on our children's shoulders, right? Yeah. And we are so busy just trying to keep up with life and all the responsibilities of it, it becomes one more thing that you have to take care of as a parent and you have to be aware of and you have to communicate with them about. Consider this. Do you know why cigarettes, alcohol, and pornography are at least legally only for consumption by adults? The reason is because if a child consumes alcohol or a teen consumes alcohol, they are far more likely, like 10 times likelier, to become an addict. Mm -hmm. And for that, for, and for alcohol used to be irresponsible and to consume their lives. Why? Because their brains are still developing and they're forming scripts for how life works and how to deal with stress and how to deal with trauma. Same thing with cigarettes and with pornography. If someone starts consuming pornography in their 20s, they're far more likely to see it as fiction and fantasy as opposed to this is how sex and sexuality relationships work versus a child or a teenager who consumes it and then, and then this becomes part of their life script for this is how relationships are supposed to be. It's the same way with social media, which isn't to say that adults, it's just a free for all, but it, social media, electronics, like if you don't set limits and if you don't have guidelines and if you don't have conversations about responsible use, then what ends up happening is this becomes a lifelong habit as well as how people relate to the world because at the very sensitive formative stages, it becomes part of their foundation and we need to be careful about that. I read this somewhere. I have no idea who said it, but I've read, when a person can't find a deep sense of meaning, they distract themselves with pleasure. And electronics and social media, that's what it's become for so many of us, right? Yeah. So if you're seeking to find the balance for you or in your family and what this looks like for you, start asking yourself questions. Is this serving me? Am I using it as a distraction? And if I am, what could I do differently? What meaning in life can I find? Yeah. Wonderful. And if this is something that you need more support with in your life, I love the book by Victoria Dunkley, Four Weeks to Reset Your Child's Brain. I highly recommend it. What do you think about this video? How is social media affecting our kids? Let us know in the comments below. Have you seen when your kids have excessive social media time or excessive screen time, a change in their thinking, a change in their behavior? What does that look like? We would love to learn from you. We also encourage you to check out the video that's gonna pop up at the end of this one. It's social media's fault, they said. And if you need support in your life or family relationships, go to mendedlight.com and see what we have to offer for you. Until next time, folks, keep shining. We, we need, need your, your light. light.